could you survive a night in your vehicle in the middle of a winter storm with freezing temperatures if you were stranded? That's what we're going to talk about today. So stick around. Well, as you can see, I'm out here in this parking lot today and not out in the back country battling mother nature or bringing you any more gear reviews and the reason for that is because I want to raise awareness to a very important topic which takes place every winter season here in North America and throughout the world and that is how are you supposed to survive a night or two in your vehicle if you become stranded in a snowstorm with wintry conditions and freezing temperatures. Now, most of you are well aware what took place this past Christmas holidays in northeastern United States and more importantly in Buffalo, New York, where 47 people perished in their snowstorm and freezing temperatures up in Buffalo. And they got about six to eight feet of snow and like I said, 47 people needlessly died during that snowstorm. Many of them stranded in their vehicles with no place to go and not properly prepared. So let's talk about that. Now, being properly prepared for the possibility of being run off the road uh, into a ditch or having to pull over for the night because of the road conditions are not conducive to travel You're going to need a few basic items and Some of these items obviously go without saying First of all if you're going to venture out in a snowstorm or in terrible winter traveling conditions make sure your gas tank is filled to the brim that gas tank could save your life if you end up stranded out there on the road because it could be your only source of heat to keep you alive throughout the night until some emergency services get to you. Another important item is make sure your spare tire is properly inflated. Now. How many of you, and I'll be honest, how many of you periodically check your spare tire throughout the winter months to ensure it's properly filled up? Not going to embarrass anybody, but I'm pretty sure a lot of you do not. The other thing is, know where your jack is in case you need to change your tire. And know how to use it. In a stranded situation with freezing temperatures in a snowstorm is not the place you want to try out your jack changing a spare tire believe me another point to consider is make sure your fluid levels are topped up you do not want to have a breakdown in a winter storm out there trust me and the last item that goes without saying is have a pair of jumper cables in case you need them. Now, jumper cables are fine if there is another vehicle there to assist you. However, chances are there's not going to be a vehicle pulling up beside you to give you a hand in a snowstorm. So, get yourself one of these these are self rescue jumper cables with a cobalt battery to go with it you simply plug in your jumper cables in this area right there there's your jumper cables attach them properly red to red black as ground then fire up your vehicle and you're ready to go. Remember, there isn't always going to be somebody out there stopping to assist you. 
it's important for you to self-rescue yourself as well. Now, you can also get these self-rescue jumper cables that come with an attachment for all your peripherals, such as your cell phone. So in an emergency situation out there in a snowstorm, this will also come in handy to top up your cell phone if you need it to call 911 or somebody to come and assist you. That may not always be the case because cell phone uh, coverage out there in a snowstorm is sketchy at best. Now, I don't know how long my battery is going to last in these conditions uh, simply because it's getting pretty cold out here and it's, tonight's temperature is due to fall down to minus 25 degrees Celsius which is about minus 13 Fahrenheit but with the wind chill temperatures are falling to minus 41 degrees Celsius which is approximately the same in Fahrenheit that's friggin cold folks and I'll tell you something if you're not properly prepared when you're venturing out in a snowstorm in freezing conditions you're not going to last long in those temperatures whether you're in your vehicle or humping it to a safe place and the reason why I'm talking about the battery is because the cold is going to sap all the energy and drain it all in no time in those conditions and um, if you're not aware those of you with a GoPro camera out there they usually come with this battery here and I can tell you in freezing conditions when you're trying to videotape anything these things suck crap they only last about five minutes in about 10 below degree temperature however GoPro has been listening to GoPro users and they've come up with this GoPro Enduro battery which is supposed to last considerably longer in colder temperatures so tonight when I'm camping in my vehicle to demonstrate that you can survive in those temperatures in a snowstorm I'm going to be using this battery to ensure that the taping is not rudely interrupted by the cold all right so before we move on to some of the critical pieces of kit you're going to need in your vehicle emergency uh, bag the first thing I want to say is if you do become stranded in a snowstorm out there the first rule of thumb is remain with your vehicle your vehicle is going to be your shelter it's going to protect you from the environment from the wind chill the blowing snow if you've ever tried to trudge out in deep snow trying to get to safety I can tell you it's a difficult task especially in deep snow you're going to wear yourself out fairly quickly you're not going to make it very far folks and I'm sorry to say that's where your last step is going to be taken if that's what you decide to do in temperatures like tonight minus 41 degrees Celsius in a snowstorm they'll find you in a snowbank thawed out in the spring okay the first piece of gear that you should always have in your vehicle as a part of your emergency kit is a wool blanket as a minimum however if you're in northern this the northern states or up here in Canada where temperatures frequently exceed minus 10 to minus 20 and like for instance tonight minus 41 the blanket alone is not going to keep you alive however if you're in the lower states where temperatures never reach that a blanket is what you're going to want to have a nice wool blanket this one here is a military wool blanket and it is fairly warm and it is fire retardant so number one piece of kit fire blanket made of wool the next piece of kit you're going to want to have is a first aid kit it may come in handy you may get injured when you run off the road into the ditch or if you're trying to change a spare tire and you cut yourself it's good to have 
good pair of gloves. I'll tell you, there is absolutely no way you're going to change a spare tire with bare hands in freezing temperatures. It's never going to happen unless you've got a good pair of gloves, preferably with leather palms. Some sort of a winter hat or a balaclava. Hey, if you're out there changing your tire, the wind is blowing and that bone chilling wind comes barreling through you there, you're going to want to have a balaclava to keep that wind chill off your face. A good pair of wool socks will surely come in handy, especially when you're stranded out there trying to stay warm in your vehicle overnight. Remember, it doesn't matter if you've got CAA or AAA. You can call them a hundred times. They're not coming to get you. It's a winter storm. It's blowing snow. Visibility is down to zero. The roads probably are going to be closed down. The main highways, the back roads, the police are going to tell everybody to stay off the road. No one's coming to get you. You're going to have to look after yourself. Another good piece of kit to have, foot warmers and hand warmers. I can tell you these things come in real handy in extreme wintry conditions. Now your hands you could probably keep warm fairly easy by placing them in your coat or jacket, but your toes, toe warmers, essential. There's not a whole lot you can do with your toes when they get frozen. Might be a good idea as well to have some roadside hazards, you know, flashing hazard lights, uh, those triangles, or one of these, uh, which is basically a, not really a flashlight, but it is a SOS signal. And at night, you can see this from afar. Good piece of kit to have as well to flag down any vehicle that may be coming down, especially if it's an emergency vehicle. If you've got a winter sleeping bag, throw that in there. If you don't have a winter sleeping bag, but you've got one or two summer sleeping bags, you can always combine the two to make a fairly decent winter bag. Throw those in there as well because that blanket's not gonna save your butt at 41 below zero, I can tell you that. You're gonna need a sleeping bag for sure. I also throw in my summer camp mattress, as you see here, uh, because if I'm gonna sleep in my vehicle, I'll tell you one thing, I hate sleeping in the driver's seat, and I wake up with a huge kink on my neck and it is sore for hours. If I'm going to sleep in my vehicle on a, when I'm stranded in a winter storm, I'm going to try at least to be a little bit comfortable. So a nice little mattress like this, or a blow up one, or one of those um, cell phone mattresses will do just fine as well. Also, a flashlight. Any type of flashlight will do. You don't want to be using the light in your vehicle all night because you're just going to run down the battery. So have a flashlight in your emergency kit and you won't have to do that. Another pro tip I forgot to mention is if you're going to venture out there in a winter storm, at least be properly dressed. I can't tell you the number of times I've seen people walking in and out of their vehicles in winter conditions dressed with summer clothes. If you're going to venture out there in traveling to a lo different location, at least have some winter clothes on. A jacket, a puffy jacket, a hard shell jacket, a, a fleece jacket, proper winter boots, a hat, whatever. Just be properly dressed. It'll go a long way should you get stranded out there. A Leatherman multi-tool. Throw that in there as well. 
it can definitely come in handy for a multitude of different tasks should you need it. What I like to do as well is I like to throw in some food and some water. It doesn't take a lot, just need a little bit. And long to go with that is one of these little backpacking stoves which you could use with chemical fuel tablets if you want to heat up a cup of water for some coffee hot chocolate whatever pretty handy to have and along with that of course you're gonna want either one of these Bic lighters or a set of matches I prefer to use that type of stove with those chemical tablets simply because if you use a butane stove or a liquid stove or a propane stove and you have a flare up inside your vehicle kaboom boys I tell you there goes your shelter you're not gonna stop that fire inside your vehicle and you're gonna lose your shelter never place your shelter in jeopardy one of the key components you should always have in your emergency vehicle kit is, of course, water. Now, I keep my water in these hard plastic Nalgene bottles with a wide mouth. But the issue with water, of course, is how do you keep it from freezing? Well, there is a couple of things you could probably do what I've done is I've purchased a neoprene sleeve to go over my Nalgene bottle to help it from freezing. But sometimes that isn't enough, especially in these temperatures I'm going to experience tonight. So another thing you could do is you can take one of your fleece jackets, place the bottle inside, and roll it up into a ball and that does help it from freezing as most people know water tends to freeze from the top down so I usually store my water bottles upside down so it'll freeze from the top down and hopefully when you want to use your water bottle by the time the freezing process stops halfway turn it upside down and you will have a little bit of liquid water left and you can use that to brew yourself up a cup of coffee another trick that you could use is if you have a snowbank take your water bottle place it upside down inside the snowbank and you should be good to go as you know snow is a great insulator those are a few tips and tricks to help you keep your water from freezing heat well heat is important when it comes to winter especially in these types of uh, sub-zero temperatures and like I said earlier if you've topped up your gas tank well you've got a heat source right there that you could use throughout the night to, to help you survive through the night uh, I know a lot of people uh, use those uh, uh, buddy heaters and uh, they run off of propane but like I said I never jeopardize my shelter and if you don't believe me just go on YouTube and check out some of the fails that have taken place with people using propane heaters in their RVs or their vehicles and they end up without any shelter and the last thing you want in this type of environment at 40 below zero is end up without your shelter your shelter is going to keep you alive don't put it at jeopardy all right, let's just go over some of the types of different food items I bring along. Small bag of peanuts, lots of fat and calories to keep your furnace going. A can of soup comes in handy as well. Also, if you're going to put in cans of food, make sure it's a pop open 
type of can. If you don't have a can opener, you ain't gonna open up the can, folks. A little bit of comfort food, whatever you like. Chips Ahoy. That's my favorite. Or throw in a bar of chocolate, whatever fancy in you, bag of chips, whatever. Some granola bars. A couple of packages of Mr. Noodles or ramen. Can of tuna again with the pop open. Some Quaker oats. Some hot chocolate. Whatever fancies you. Goes a long way to make it through the night, guys. A little bit of food. It's not very expensive, just throw it in your bag. Ooh, temperatures are starting to drop already here. Um, last thing I wanna mention is, for all those items, you're gonna wanna place it in your bag, such as this little backpack. Have it by your doorway. Pick it up before you head out, throw it in your vehicle. Don't put it in your vehicle and leave it there for days on end. Everything in there, including your water, will be a frozen popsicle. So put it by your door, on your way out, pick it up, throw it in your vehicle, and you're good to go. All right, so lastly, before I close this off and prepare my vehicle for tonight's camp out in it, I wanna say this, a safety tip for everybody out there. If you find yourself driving in terrible winter conditions out there, look, I get it, folks. Christmas holiday season, everybody's out traveling, trying to get to their loved ones, family, friends. And sometimes you push it a little bit, trying to get through that storm to get there. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work out that way. And you may run off the road in the ditch, or you may have to pull over for the night. Do not pull over on a major road. The reason for that is everyone coming behind you is not going to see you when you're pulled over and can easily run right into you. And that will even make for a much worse day for you. All right? So if you have to pull over, take an off ramp, get over to a truck stop or a town that you come across and stay in a parking lot at Walmart or something overnight but do not pull over on the highway all right it could be a night it could be two nights it, it, nobody knows uh, that winter storm that hit in the eastern northeastern states that thing lasted for several days folks so be prepared when you head out put a few things in your go bag throw it in your vehicle you're prepared if anything should happen. All right, I hope that's helpful for you guys out there. I'm gonna pack everything up and set up my vehicle. I'll talk to you later tonight when I'm in my vehicle trying to survive tonight. Welcome back to Survival NS. Well, here I am in the vehicle. As you can see, it's pretty darn cold in here. Let me just grab the light here. We'll check what the temperature is outside. I'm not exactly sure if you can see that, but it's registering minus 40 out there. Minus 40 out there. That's pretty darn cold. So I'm guessing it's about minus 20 in here in the vehicle. So as you can see here, I've got my chemical tablet stove going. I'm just going to be placing some water in that pot. 
and placing it on top of that, heating it up, have myself a nice hot cup of coffee. While I'm waiting for my water to get boiled up here, just want to pass on a little bit of information that I forgot to pass on to you folks earlier today. And that is, during my days in the military, whenever we signed out a vehicle to travel to a point A to point B, we always had a vehicle checklist that we had to check off all the items, place it in the vehicle, and then uh, ensure that checklist was passed on to our supervisor and he would sign off on it, making sure that we had all our emergency vehicle checklist kit prepared, ready to go anytime we headed out. And I think, you know, for us as civilians, I think that's an excellent thing to keep in mind and probably a good practice as well. The other thing I failed to mention earlier today was a shovel. That should also be a part of your emergency kit for your vehicle anytime you head out. A nice little snow shovel. One of those lightweight uh, telescopic ones would be just fine. Um, the other thing, remember, this is not glamping. This is survival. So if you are ever stranded out there in a snowstorm in the middle of winter with cold freezing temperatures, it's not the Hilton that you're looking at. This is basic stuff. You're just trying to survive the night. So make sure you do have some water, all right? Remember the laws of three. Three minutes without air, three hours in harsh conditions, three days without water and three weeks without food. Those are the laws of three. You should always keep in mind when it's coming down to survival. Well, I'm just about ready to jump into my sleeping bag and call it a night. But before I do, I just want to have you guys get a quick look at my setup. Like I said, it's not the Hilton. You're just trying to survive a night. That's all there is to it. Don't make it any harder than it has to be. Well, good morning, everybody. It's 5 a.m. It's about minus 20 in here, and I managed to survive the night okay. Although, I did use a dedicated winter sleeping bag and I was pretty comfy and toasty in here now I'm not advocating everybody to go out and purchase themselves a dedicated winter bag because that's fairly expensive but you can also get by with a couple of three season bags and you just combine the two and it'll have the same effect really wanted to get the point out there to everybody that you can survive the night in your vehicle if you become stranded in a winter storm it is doable now the thermometer is still reading close to 39 below zero out there and I don't know if you can hear the wind gusts that are happening and it has been that way throughout the night and the vehicle was rocked throughout the night with those wind gusts so it is howling out there and i can tell you that if you left your shelter your vehicle and try to hump it out i don't think you'd get very far with those wind gusts and those rock solid freezing temperatures you would make it and especially as well if you had knee-deep snow, don't try it. You wouldn't make it very far. It's now 5.30. Had the vehicle on for about a half an hour. It took that long to get the vehicle warmed up and I also got the car seat heated up. And now I can do 
relay a bit of information about what transpired last night. The good news is that dedicated winter bags certainly did the trick. Um, but if you don't have a winter bag, you can always put together two three season bags, zip those together and you're good to go. If you don't have any sleeping bags when you're stranded in your vehicle, hopefully you've topped up your vehicle with gas and you can use the gas to heat the vehicle throughout the night to get you through to the morning. But I did get a little bit overheated in the bag, believe it or not, I had this fleece jacket on. I had to take that off because it was getting a little too hot in my winter bag. So I ended up with this very thin micro fleece jacket and that pretty much did the trick for me in there. I also got a pair of micro fleece pants to go with it and that's all I needed. Um, the other good thing about this jacket, I don't know if you can see here, but it comes with zippers, zippered pockets. I've got two of them, which is very, comes in very handy because you can put your batteries and your cell phone in there, keep them warm throughout the night, and it'll prevent the cold from zapping its power. So got up this morning and they're all fully charged, which is good. Um, the vehicle inside getting up in the morning was about minus 24 So that's pretty cool in here however getting out of the vehicle to come around to the um, Driver's door to get inside with that wind chill out there That was harsh And if you had to hump it out there in that temperature and knee deep snow like I said earlier That's not doable so Prepare yourself when you venture out there. If you do get stranded, at least you got some kit to help you make it through the night. In the morning, the light will come out, the sun, it'll start to heat up a little bit, hopefully, and you'll be able to see what's out there on the road, and hopefully some emergency vehicles will be out on the road clearing, and you'll be rescued. The other thing I want to mention is if you do use your vehicle for heat throughout the night just make sure that your exhaust pipe is clear of snow the last thing you want is the snow to build up over your tailpipe and you uh, pass out in here with uh, carbon monoxide and obviously that's not a good thing so that pretty much does it for this episode I want to thank everybody for coming along on this journey I just uh, wanted to get this information out for everybody after what took place over in northeastern states and in Buffalo, like I said, and hopefully this will be helpful for everybody. All right, hit the subscribe and like buttons, and we'll see you on the next adventure. This is Jose, Survival NS, out.